my dear students <clears throat> i welcome you all to another lecture on power quality problems and solutions in our last lecture as you remember uh, we have discussed uh, we have categorized the power quality problems into two broad categories <clears throat> number 1 voltage and current variations and number 2 events we have uh, i have told you that voltage and current variations means uh slow changes um in the voltage and current magnitudes and we have categorized this power quality problems into eight types of subclasses first one was voltage magnitude variation or magnet voltage variation second was voltage frequency variation or power frequency variation or simply frequency variation then voltage fluctuations then voltage flicker then current magnitude variations then current phase vari variations and current and voltage imbalance or three phase unbalance uh, these were seven type types of power quality problems that we have already discussed in last class today we are going to discuss the eighth type of power quality problem which comes under this category this is the last type of power quality problems which will be covered under this category that is <coughs> voltage and current variations and this eighth type of power quality problem is voltage distortions voltage distortions now we have to understand voltage distortions and the impact of voltage distortions on uh, your power system now <clears throat> uh, you should never expect the voltage uh, to be a single frequency sine wave it never happens in today's era in modern era it's very very rare that you will uh, display the voltage on the oscilloscope and you expect this purely sinusoidal voltage which is available to the consumers so um, we don't expect our, the voltage to be single frequency sine wave uh, uh, so what should you expect you should expect a distorted voltage <clears throat> now what is voltage distortion how do we define voltage distortion we define voltage distortion as distortion is uh, defined as the degree to which the voltage waveform deviates from sinusoidal see voltage waveform should be sinusoidal but it deviates from sinusoidal it is never sinusoidal the degree to which the voltage waveform deviates from sinusoidal waveform or the degree to which voltage deviates from sinusoidal waveform that's called voltage distortion now the question is what are the causes of voltage distortions or voltage distortion what are the causes uh, mainly there are three causes of voltage distortion number 1 harmonics rather four causes number 1 harmonics number 2 interharmonics and subharmonics interharmonics and subharmonics subharmonics is the second category or second cause third is voltage notching voltage notching and fourth is dc offset of loads dc offset of loads these are the four main causes of voltage distortions four main causes let us discuss them one by one so first cause of voltage distortion is harmonics see uh, any periodic waveform for example let us take this type of waveform it's a periodic waveform or this type of waveform it's also a periodic waveform these are all examples of periodic waveforms or this type of waveform these are all periodic waveforms this type of waveform this is triangular wave this is sawtooth wave this is square wave and this is um, <clears throat> uh, also a non sinusoidal wave all these waveforms are periodic waveforms but non sinusoidal waveforms according to fourier series any periodic waveform can be um, considered to be comprising of uh, sine waves with frequencies which are multiples of fundamental frequency okay and the non fundamental frequency components are nothing but harmonics 
For example, if you apply Fourier series to this triangular carrier wave, the Fourier series says that this triangular carrier wave comprises of a fundamental component. Let us call this fundamental component V1. 1 means fundamental, which is at 50 Hertz. Then it will have, say, for example, third frequency harmonic. Multiple frequency harmonics will be there. Third frequency harmonic, we call it as V3. What is its frequency? See, for one cycle of fundamental, it completes three cycles. One, two, three. That's why it's called third harmonic. Similarly, it will have fifth harmonic, V5, whose frequency is five times the fundamental. It will have seventh harmonic, V7, whose frequency is seven times fundamental. V9, with frequency nine times five, uh, fundamental. V11, with frequency 11 times fundamental v13 with a frequency of 30 times fundamental and so on so these non-fundamental frequency components whether it is v3 or v5 or v7 v9 v11 or so on these are called harmonics so these are also sine waves but their frequency is not fundamental frequency but it is a multiple of fundamental frequency for example this is third multiple of fundamental frequency this is fifth this has a fifth, fifth multiple of fundamental frequency seventh multiple of fundamental frequency and so on so these are unwanted uh, uh, frequency components in the waveform and these unwanted components result in distortion in the voltage waveform because what will be your uh, resultant voltage waveform it will not be sinusoidal alone it will be see if you go for addition it will be the sinusoidal at each and every point it will be sinusoidal component plus third harmonic component plus fifth harmonic component plus seventh harmonic component and that that may finally give rise to distorted voltage waveform v which may be a triangular carrier waveform which may be a sawtooth voltage waveform which may be of this shape which may be a rectangular voltage waveform or square voltage waveform or any other shape other than uh, the sinusoidal wave shape so this is what we mean by harmonics now uh, that is about harmonics now the question is <clears throat> what causes these harmonics what are the causes of these harmonics what causes harmonic injection in the voltages the first cause may be that the generator at the generating station itself may not be generating pure sinusoidal waveform due to deviation from ideal shape of the generator. However, let me tell you that the generated voltage uh, waveforms are generally uh, sinusoidal in nature. The uh, generated voltage waveforms do not have a large deviation. The deviation may be neg negligibly small it may be so small that the generated voltage waveform can always be considered approximately or approximating to a pure sinusoidal waveform. So therefore, in the electric power system, uh, if you say that generator is responsible for uh, harmonics for distorted voltage waveforms, this is a wrong statement. Generators or alternators are generally designed to generate purely sinusoidal voltage waveforms like this. V. There may be very small distortion in the voltage waveform, but that distortion may be negligibly small, so that for all practical purposes, we consider the generated voltage waveform to be purely sinusoidal. So this is ruled out. Generator causing distortion in the voltage, it's ruled out. Second cause may be, as if you see the literature, the, the second cause may be, see the power system which uses long transmission lines for transport or transmission of power over long transmission lines from generating stations to the load centers, this power system is not linear itself. It has some nonlinear components. See, so power system has some nonlinear components. And it is said that these nonlinear components in the power system may cause distortion in the voltage. Now, these nonlinear components, when they are fed from purely sine wave, which is generated by generator, they may draw non sinusoidal currents. So, such components are called nonlinear components. Example of nonlinear component of a power system is a power transformer. 
which is used at generating station and at other uh, substations if this power transformer is operating in the saturation its magnetic core is saturated it is in saturation mode then it will definitely result in drawing the currents which are non sinusoidal and those non sinusoidal currents will cause distortions in the voltages recently another uh, non linear component which has been added to the power system is power electronics based non ideal system that is hvdc systems high voltage direct current systems you will study a course on hvdc systems in mtech second semester and that course is also common to both specializations there you will see that your hvdc system comprises of two converters this is one converter on this side this is another converter and you know, this you have ac on this side you have ac on this side this is hvdc line this converter converts ac at high voltage into dc and transmits power at you know over this dc line dc transmission line and then this converter is responsible for converting dc back into ac and feeding the power to the loads now these converters are part of hvdc systems and they are very important components of hvdc systems these converters also act as non linear loads and they draw uh, or they inject harmonics into the currents and hence cause harmonic distortion another recently added you know device <laughs> or non linear component in your power systems is flexible ac transmission systems i hope you are doing some of uh, some of you are already uh, studying this course with professor ajaz ahmed of our department flexible ac transmission system in flexible ac transmission system uh, controllers or facts controllers you have many thyristorized con controllers thyristorized facts controllers the example of thyristorized facts controllers is for example svc static wire compensator you will study that in your course then um, thyristor controlled series capacitor thyristor switched series capacitor thyristor controlled series reactor thyristor switched series reactor and so on all these facts controllers are used for compensation of transmission networks and these uh, are all based on thyristors like this thyristor converters or thyristors and wherever you use thyristor scr in your transmission system this thyristor acts as a non linear load and it is responsible for drawing non linear currents or distorted currents thus causing distortion in the voltage so therefore all the components of your power system are not linear i have given you three examples of power system components which act as non linear elements a power transformer if it is operating in the saturation mode number 1 number 2 facts controllers and number 3 hvdc system however it has been observed that the distortion caused by these non linear components of power system they also do not cause large distortion or distortion to a higher degree they cause small distortion in the voltage so they are not the main culprits the third cause is then and which is the main culprit for uh, causing harmonics in the voltages and causing voltage distortion is widespread use of non linear loads in uh, in, in in the loads non linear loads by the consumers see modern loads are most of the modern loads whether they are domestic loads commercial loads or industrial loads they use power electronics ac to dc converters most of them use ac they are fitted with ac to dc converters and if they use traditional ac to dc converters like diode bridge rectifiers or phase controlled converters thyristorized converters they act as non linear loads i can give you hundreds of examples where you use these non uh, these ac to dc converters in your loads and it is these ac to dc converters which cause the entire load consumer load to act as a non linear load now the question is why do we call this load a non linear load so you may have two types of loads on the system one is linear load the example of linear load i will give here let me give you example of linear load 
this is the example of linear load this is voltage and this is your linear load okay and this is the current now in this linear load if you see a relationship between voltage and current see this is current along x-axis and voltage is along y-axis it has a linear relationship it follows Ohm's law this is load resistance or load impedance it follows Ohm's law that means if you increase voltage by 10% current will also increase by 10% if you increase voltage by 50% current will also increase by 50% so any variation in the voltage across the load will cause a proportionate variation in the current flowing through that load and therefore such a load is called linear load so therefore if your voltage is purely sinusoidal here voltage applied across the load is purely sinusoidal like this 0 pi 2 pi the current drawn by the load will also be sinusoidal it will also be sinusoidal 0 pi 2 pi that is what we mean by linear load in a linear load the current waveform follows very closely the voltage waveform that means if your voltage waveform is sinusoidal the current waveform will also be sinusoidal number one and number two any variation in voltage will cause a proportionate variation in the current such a load is called a linear load a linear load draws purely sinusoidal currents without any harmonics from the system and what are the examples of linear load examples of linear load are resistance resistive load inductive load capacitive load rl load and rc load these are all examples of linear loads a resistor draws if it, if it is excited by a sinusoidal voltage waveform it draws purely sinusoidal current so does an inductor so does a capacitor only you know phase relationship will be different here power factor will be unity and in these cases power factor will be zero lagging zero leading in RL load, uh, current, if voltage is sinusoidal, current will also be sinusoidal, but current will lag behind voltage by certain phase angle. And in RC load, also current is purely sinusoidal because voltage is also sinusoidal, but current may lead voltage by certain phase angle. So these are the examples of linear loads. A linear load is that load in which current very closely follows the voltage. That means if voltage is purely sinusoidal, current also attains sinusoidal wave shape but modern day loads are not most of the modern day loads are not linear loads they act as non-linear loads an example of a non-linear load is like this the example of a non-linear load is like this this is voltage waveform v applied voltage and this is your non-linear load i can show non-linear load like this this is the current drawn by non-linear load the relationship between voltage and current of this non-linear load is not linear if this is current waveform along x-axis and this is voltage waveform along y-axis so relationship will be like this it is not a linear relationship the graph between voltage and current is not a linear graph it's not a straight line it's something like this that means if you increase voltage by certain amount for example your voltage is here if you increase voltage by certain amount a small amount the current may double you are in, you may increase uh, voltage by say 10 percent but current may increase by 100 percent a small increase in voltage will not cause that much increase in current a small increase in voltage may cause two times current drawn by the load from the source or a small increase in voltage may double your current because the relationship between voltage and current is not linear it's a non-linear relationship okay so therefore if your voltage waveform applied voltage waveform is like this it is purely sinusoidal like this the current will not be sinusoidal current will be something like this non-sinusoidal this is your current waveform so therefore it is the non-linear load which is responsible for distortion of the current why i am showing current peaky because a small when voltage increases current does not increase proportionately it increases by a large amount so that's why current attains a peak 
and since this relationship between voltage and current is not linear if voltage is sinusoidal current will never be sinusoidal it will be non sinusoidal like this an example of a non linear load is a bridge rectifier like this a bridge rectifier like this <clears throat> this is source this is the applied voltage v and this is the source current i this is vs this is i source voltage and source current let us assume the load the rectifier acts as a power supply and it applies power to a purely resistive load but you are using a filter capacitor if you have studied your power electronics you know uh, very well in your uh, undergraduate course uh, you can very easily draw the waveform for voltage and current i will not go into those details i assume that you already know the nature of current drawn by this type of rectifier this is a single phase bridge diode bridge rectifier feeding a purely resistive load but with a filter capacitor connected across the resistor see if i remove this filter capacitor then the voltage and current will be like this if this is voltage source voltage source current will be purely sinusoidal then this will also act as a linear load but as soon as i connect a capacitor across the load filter capacitor the current and voltage relationship no longer remains li linear it becomes non linear relationship that means if this is your voltage waveform applied voltage waveform vs 0 pi 2 pi that it will this rectifier with filter capacitor will draw this type of current it will draw uh, one current pulse high uh, pk current pulse in the positive half cycle and one current pulse in the negative half cycle i advise you you please go back to your ug power electronics just brush up your memories you must have been taught by your power electronics teacher that a single phase bridge rectifier with filter capacitor connected across the load draws this type of current so this is your source current now without filter capacitor the source current follows the voltage it's purely sinusoidal because voltage is also purely sinusoidal and the voltage and current have a linear relationship but with filter capacitor connected across the load the voltage and current do not have a linear relationship applied voltage is purely sinusoidal but the source current is not sinusoidal it is highly distorted and if you find its total harmonic distortion thd it will be very nearly equal to 100% that means this current is very very rich in harmonics it has very strong harmonics it has a very strong third harmonic component very strong fifth harmonic component seventh harmonic component and other higher order components so it is highly distorted current and the relationship between voltage and current may be something like this it may be something like this highly distorted current it's not a linear relationship it is non linear relationship another example is instead of using resistive load your load may be rl type load with high inductance and uh, i have i have not connected a filter capacitor here so in this case if your single phase bridge rectifier is feeding an rl type of load okay the, this is load voltage vd this is load current id this is source voltage vs and this is source current is what type of current will this rectifier draw this is omega t axis so if this is your source voltage vs 0 pi 2 pi these are zero crossing points the current may be like this rectangular current if inductance is very very high inductor will make current ripple free it will become your source current now what type of current it is drawing it is not drawing sinusoidal current it is drawing rectangular or square wave current and if you find thd of this current i have made a calculation i have calculated thd of this current it is 48 point its thd total harmonic distortion is 48.3% very nearly 50% so that means the level of distortion in this current is nearly 50% so this is also a distorted current and this type of uh, you know uh, rectifier with rl load also acts as a non linear load so therefore wherever you find ac to dc converters feeding different types of loads it may be rl load it may be rl e load or 
any other type of node this ac to dc converter a power electronics based converter it acts as a non linear load so therefore power electronic ac to dc converter based equipments they act as non linear loads in which the current and voltage have non linear relationship and voltage is sinusoidal but current drawn by the load is non sinusoidal it is distorted so therefore the question is why do you use these ac to dc converters because it is these ac to dc converters which are fitted in your loads and it is these ac to dc converters which act as non linear loads why do you use these ac to dc converters what are the applications of ac to dc converters applications of ac to dc converters and let me tell you that these ac to dc converters act as non linear loads i have just few moments back shown you how they act, act as non linear loads non linear loads what are the why do you use in your practical life ac to dc converters you use ac to dc converters very widely in your homes in your offices in your business establishments in hotels in shopping complexes in theaters Uh, you know in industries in transportation in communication equipment in military equipment in ships in aircrafts in non conventional energy sources you, there is you know uh, every year billions of ac to dc converters are manufactured and they are used one simple example is your um, uh, mobile phone charger mobile phone charger what we, uh, which is also called adapter your mobile phone charger is fitted with a rectifier what is the job of that rectifier you connect your adapter to the socket wall socket wall socket gives 230 volts 50 hertz ac and the job of that rectifier is to convert ac into dc and then that dc voltage charges your battery mobile phone battery okay this is a simple example then your tv power supply television power supply you connect your tv set to wall socket which is again ac but all, all the circuits in your tv they work on dc so therefore you have to convert this ac into dc so there is a front end ac to dc converter or rectifier that's called front end rectifier it converts ac into dc and that becomes your tv power supply so therefore this ac to dc converter acts as a non linear load your cable set top box or dish tv set top box power supply this also uses ac to dc converter and this ac to dc converter in the set top box power supply it's a front end converter and it acts as a non linear load then switch mode power supply in computers whether it is a laptop or a desktop computers they use switch mode power supply the switch mode power supplies have front end ac to dc converters and these ac to dc converters they result in the distortion of the current they draw distorted currents currents which are very rich in harmonics hence they act as non linear loads where else do you use uh, this, these ac to dc converters you use these ac to dc converters in uh, communication circuits communications systems like for example your telephone communication system requires 48 volts dc typical uh, but it is supplied with single phase 230 volts ac then there is an ac to dc converter which converts this 230 volts ac into 48 volts dc so they are also use ac to dc converter for conversion of ac into dc but problem is that this ac to dc converter is a non linear load it draws distorted currents from the source and causes harmonic injection in the currents supply currents or source currents and those currents are flowing in the lines in the feeders in the distributors even in the transmission lines then you find ac to dc converters in uh, you know um, hvdc systems as i have already told you that is electric utility you find these ac to dc converters in uh, interface of non conventional energy sources or renewable 
energy sources i will write non conventional sources you use ac to dc converters you so therefore there is a widespread application of ac to dc you use these ac to dc converters in dc motor drives for speed control of dc motors you use phase controlled converters where firing angle control or delay angle control controls the output dc voltage of the converter and hence it controls the speed of dc motors you use ac to dc converters in ac motor drives also ac motor drives which are also called adjustable speed drives asds now the question is your ac motor drives works or your ac motor drive works on ac what is the job of ac to dc converter there it does not work on dc see uh, this is your this is the schematic diagram of your adjustable speed drive you use a phase controlled converter this may be your single phase or three phase ac supply mains it converts ac into dc and then you use filter capacitor for filtration of this dc voltage this is your dc voltage vdc and then you use pwm voltage source inverter pulse width modulated pwm voltage source inverter and this voltage source inverter produces an output voltage at variable voltage and variable frequency ac it produces three phase ac but this three phase ac is at fixed frequency and fixed voltage but the inverter output voltage which is also three phase ac it's at variable voltage variable frequency and it is given to for example three phase induction motor for torque control speed control see your inverter is basically a power electronic converter which converts dc into ac but your uh, what is available to industries three phase ac so first of all therefore you have to convert three phase ac into dc so you have to use three phase phase controlled converter and this is called front end converter fec front end converter because it is used at the this is this is the schematic diagram of adjustable speed drive asd why this is called front end ac to dc converter or front end converter fec because it is at the front end of the whole system what is its function its job is to convert three phase ac into dc and then this capacitor filters that dc may uh, makes this dc voltage uh, or dc link voltage purely constant and ripple free and then this inverter pwm voltage source inverter converts this dc into three phase ac at variable voltage and variable frequency and by frequency control you are able to control the speed of this induction motor so therefore in ac motor drives or adjustable speed drives also you require at the front a front end converter for conversion of three phase ac into dc so this is called front end converter nowadays in our homes we are having uh, we don't have uh, conventional air conditioning systems we have inverter ac systems inverter acs air conditioners inverter air conditioner also works on this principle uh, inverter air conditioner does not have a three phase supply it has a single phase supply and a single phase front end converter which converts ac into dc and then there is an inverter which converts dc into uh, ac okay and then that is given to the motor for speed control inverter acs in our kitchens we are using induction cooking systems induction heating or induction cooking systems induction heating or the cooking induction heating system also works on this principle you have single phase ac available not three phase ac in our home you give you connect your induction cooker to single phase ac then there is a front end converter which converts ac into dc and then that dc is converted into ac at a high frequency 25 to 40 kilohertz ac and it is this high frequency ac which induces strong eddy currents in the metal pan of the induction cooker and hence results in instant cooking or instant heating of the food or water or whatever okay our led bulbs which are we are using in our homes led bulbs they are also fitted with small ac to dc rectifiers because led bulb led works on dc not on ac so what you are connecting your bulb through your holder to ac so therefore you have to first convert ac into dc and then that dc will energize the led leds and your led bulb will glow so therefore led bulbs also have this front end converter so there are many other applications 
where AC to DC converters are used. So therefore, AC to DC converters find widespread application in all types of loads, whether it is domestic load, commercial load, industrial load, transportation, utility, aircraft, ships or military equipment, everywhere you find power electronics based equipments and they use front end AC to DC converters. So therefore these front end AC to DC converters, I have told you, it's their brighter side. These front end AC to DC converters, their brighter side is that they result in efficient, uh, these uh, development of efficient equipments like induction cooking system is highly efficient. LED bulbs are highly efficient. A 7 watt LED bulb gives better light than a 100 watt incandescent lamp. Saat watt ka LED bulb, so watt ke bulb se, incandescent bulb se better light deta hai. So you can see the uh, saving in the energy. So this energy efficiency is possible only uh, with the help of power electronics. Because you use AC to DC converter and then you use LED, LEDs for lighting the bulb. So therefore for uh, these modern equipments, energy efficient equipments, they are all fitted with AC to DC converters. They are power electronics based equipments. That is the bright side of AC to DC converters. But the dark side of AC to DC converters is that these AC to DC converters, they don't draw sinusoidal currents. The applied voltages are sinusoidal, but the current drawn by them is not sinusoidal. In addition to fundamental frequency current, they draw the harmonic component of currents also. I have just few moments back shown with the help of a few examples. I have shown a single phase uh, bridge rectifier with filter capacitor then with RL load and I have shown how what type of currents they draw. They draw distorted currents, currents which are rich in harmonics and hence they act as nonlinear loads. And therefore modern power electronic based equipments, loads, they are all they all act as nonlinear loads and it is these nonlinear loads which draw harmonics which cause harmonic injection in the currents now my question to all of you is that these nonlinear loads which are basically power electronics based use uh, sorry power electronics based loads which use front end ac to dc converters the applied voltage is sinusoidal they draw currents which are non sinusoidal my question is what if they draw non sinusoidal currents? What should we worry about? I have a particular type of load which acts as a non linear load. It draws non sinusoidal current. For example, let me give you an example. This is your source. Say this is supply bus source voltage. Here is purely sinusoidal with the applied voltage. Sinusoidal. This is the system reactance. And this is the point of common coupling, PCC. Point of common coupling is called that bus or that point where different types of loads, including our load is connected. Okay, so here at the point of common coupling, I am having a non-linear load. This is a non-linear load because it is uh, having front end AC to DC converter. And uh, I have already told you, I have just now, you have seen that these AC to DC converters, they act as non-linear loads. So this is, I will write here, a non-linear load. And there may be many loads which are linear loads, like induction motors, lights, heat, heating load, etc. They are, they may be linear loads. Other linear loads. I'm writing here other linear loads. So point of coupling, point of common coupling, PCC, is that point or that bus at which all types of loads are connected. Say some nonlinear loads and many linear loads are also connected. All types of loads are fed from this bus. So this bus or this point is called point of common coupling. Now my question is, this is the nonlinear load and all other loads are linear loads. Why should I bother? Even if my nonlinear load draws a non sinusoidal current, my other linear loads should draw sinusoidal currents like if I have a three phase induction motor here, that three phase induction motor uh, should draw sinusoidal current. I should not worry. This is drawing nonlinear current or sorry, distorted current, but this should draw uh, sinusoidal current. All these linear loads should draw sinusoidal currents because a few minutes back, I have told you that linear loads, when they are supplied with sinusoidal voltage, they draw sinusoidal current. And it is the nonlinear load 
which is fed from sinusoidal voltage but theta non sinusoidal current if my this non linear load is drawing non sinusoidal current but my other linear load should draw sinusoidal current so why am i bothered about the nature of current which is drawn by this non linear load for example this current may be distorted like this it may be it may not be sinusoidal maybe non sinusoidal like this this may be current i flowing in the system why should i bother about it because my other loads are linear loads the answer to this question is that distortions in the harmonics uh, sorry distortions in the current cause distortions in the voltage the voltage which is available at the point of common coupling which we call as vpcc point of common coupling vol voltage at the point of common coupling that no longer remains sinusoidal that becomes non sinusoidal the generated voltage vs is purely sinusoidal but the voltage which is available at the point of common coupling it is non sinusoidal the reason being what is this voltage at the point of common coupling it is the generated voltage or generation bus voltage minus these drops see if i remove this non sinusoidal non linear load from here if i have only linear loads what type of current these linear loads will draw they will draw purely sinusoidal currents and what will be this voltage this voltage vpcc will be vs minus i into x since i is also sinusoidal so voltage at the point of common coupling will be source voltage which is sinusoidal minus drop i into x which is also sinusoidal why this i x drop is sinusoidal because current is sinusoidal so sinusoidal voltage minus sinusoidal drop will give sinusoidal voltage at the point of common coupling but the case is not so in addition to linear loads i have a strong non linear loads i have non linear load here so what type of current this non linear load will draw it will not draw sinusoidal current i will put a cross here and i will tick this it will draw non sinusoidal current the generated voltage is no doubt purely sinusoidal but the current flowing in the distribution system is not sinusoidal it is non sinusoidal because this ac to dc converter which is used in many types of loads it acts as a non linear load and it is even if it is supplied with sinusoidal voltage it draws non sinusoidal current this type of current distorted current so therefore what will be the voltage at the point of common coupling it will be source voltage minus this drop so what will be this drop it will be i into x what type of i is there it is non sinusoidal current so this voltage drop will be non sinusoidal so therefore voltage at point of common coupling vpcc will be sinusoidal voltage minus on non sinusoidal drop and sinusoidal voltage message above non sinusoidal voltage drop subtract karoge the resulting voltage will be non sinusoidal that means if your generated voltage source voltage is sinusoidal but your drop voltage drop across this i into x is non sinusoidal like this it is non sinusoidal so this minus this will become non sinusoidal or something like this so voltage this is vpcc voltage at the point of common coupling it is a non sinusoidal voltage i can show you this vpcc may have this type of shape generated voltage or source voltage is sinusoidal but voltage which is available to all types of loads that is voltage at point of common coupling becomes non sinusoidal why because of the non sinusoidal current drawn by non linear loads because vpcc is source voltage minus this drop source voltage is sinusoidal minus drop is non sinusoidal so sinusoidal voltage minus non sinusoidal drop like this it results in non sinusoidal voltage so therefore i can make one statement that current distortion or current harmonics harmonics in the line current or current harmonics cause voltage distortion voltage distortion at point of common coupling ecc so it is these current harmonics or distorted current which causes voltage distortion at the point of common coupling so voltage by itself is not distorted the generated voltage is purely sinusoidal but non linear loads draw non sinusoidal current and these distorted currents result in distorted voltage drop and that results in distorted voltage at the point of common coupling so that is why non linear loads we should worry about otherwise generated voltage was purely sinusoidal but these non linear loads draw distorted currents 
and these distorted currents result in distortion in the voltage at point of common coupling and what type of voltage will be then applied across other linear loads they will have non sinusoidal voltage and when non sinusoidal or distorted voltage is applied across even linear loads what type of current will they, they draw that means linear loads will also draw distorted current and they will start giving a lot of trouble an induction motor which is designed to operate satisfactorily on a sinusoidal voltage when it is supplied with non sinusoidal voltage it produces lot of problems i will come to that later on <clears throat> now <clears throat> i can uh, mathematically also prove that distortions in the current result uh, result in distortions in the voltage at the point of common coupling let me take the same example as single phase bridge rectifier which is a non linear front end rectifier which is a non linear load now these ac to dc converters they are non linear load it's converting ac into dc acting as a power supply and this distorted uh, this dc voltage is supplied to some load but what it does it distorts it draws the distorted current from the source let us suppose this inductance is ls1 this inductance is ls2 this is source voltage and this is source current is now this is our grid this is the voltage that we are getting from the distribution system distribution transformer right and what is this ls1 ls1 shows the inductance of the transformer see uh, our in our colony in our uh, in our uh, area where we live uh, every colony has its own distribution transformer and this distribution transformer has got some leakage reactance and this ls1 shows the leakage inductance of the transformer this ls2 is a, an external inductance which is deliberately put here why it is deliberately put here i will come to that later on now what load is connected to your distribution system it is a non linear load front end ac to dc converter it's a non linear load now this is the point of common coupling what is voltage available here voltage available here is vpcc because this is point of common coupling and at this point of common coupling you have other loads also i will write here other loads like in your vicinity you may have some motor loads you may have some other consumers whose loads are maybe linear loads so this is my load which is connected to point of common coupling and these are other loads which are fed from this point of common coupling so this load is not the only load which is fed uh, by by this uh, distribution transformer there are many other loads other loads i have written here which are fed and where from they are fed they are fed from this point this is called point of common coupling and the voltage at this point of common coupling is called vpcc now we can apply kirchhoff's voltage law here according to kvl what is this vpcc it is the source voltage minus this draw so it's very simple voltage at the point of common coupling vpcc is source voltage vs which is purely sinusoidal minus voltage drop across this inductance what is the voltage drop across transformer leakage inductance voltage across an inductance is l di by dt so it is ls1 dis dis by dt what is the current flowing in the line it is 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 means source current now <clears throat> interestingly this is the equation now what is this is source current we already know that our non linear load uh, draws a distorted current so according to fourier series this current is h equal to 1 to infinity it compre uh, it is ish but h is the harmonic order h equal to 1 means fundamental so it comprises of fundamental component is1 which is the pure sine wave component at 50 hertz plus harmonic components plus summation h not equal to 1 ish for example it may have third harmonic component so h is equal to 3 means so therefore it may be is1 that is fundamental component plus third harmonic component plus fifth harmonic component according to fourier series plus seventh harmonic component is7 plus ninth harmonic component is9 plus 11th harmonic component is11 plus 13th harmonic component is13 and so on 
So this is the fundamental component, which is pure sine wave at fundamental frequency, that's 50 Hz. If your source voltage is at 50 Hz, this is also at 50 Hz. But these are all harmonics, undesired components. So therefore, what is the voltage at point of common coupling, VPCC? VPCC is source voltage, which is sinusoidal, minus LS1 DIS by DT. And what is this IS? It is IS1. So it is LS1 DIS1 by DT. I have taken fundamental component separately. Minus LS1 summation H0 equal to 1 DISH by DT. That is this component. There will be voltage drop due to fundamental which is this. There will be voltage drop in the inductance due to harmonic components which is this okay now the, your source voltage is sinusoidal and fundamental component of current is also sinusoidal so this drop is sinusoidal so sinusoidal voltage minus sinusoidal voltage drop is sinusoidal itself so vpcc i can write is vpcc1 one means fundamental because what is the fundamental frequency 50 hertz this is at, this is at 50 hertz IS1 is the fundamental component of current. This is also at 50 Hertz. So this voltage minus this drop will be sinusoidal and it will be at fundamental frequency. So this this I have written, I have uh, made VS minus LS1 DIS1 by DT. I represent, I denote it by VPCC1 minus, what is this? This is the voltage drop due to harmonics and this voltage drop is distorted voltage drop. So I call this VPCC distort distorted voltage drop so therefore what is the voltage at point of common coupling it is the fundamental voltage drop okay which is sinusoidal minus distorted voltage drop which is non sinusoidal which is because of harmonics now this is sinusoidal this is non sinusoidal sinusoidal minus non sinusoidal gives non sinusoidal so therefore your voltage at the point of common coupling becomes distorted what distorts it it is the harmonic component of currents drawn by non-linear loads which causes distortion in the voltage at the point of common coupling. So therefore it is not the voltage which by itself is distorted. It is the current non-sinusoidal or distorted current drawn by the non-linear loads which cause, which cause distorted voltage drops, harmonic voltage drops in the system inductance or system reactance and hence they distort the voltage at point of common coupling. Source voltage is sinusoidal, but voltage at point of common coupling is not sinusoidal. It is non-sinusoidal. It is distorted because of this. I hope this is clear. So that is why these non-linear loads are very dangerous. Non-linear loads draw distorted currents and these distorted currents cause distortion in the voltage at point of common coupling. And it is not only the non-linear load which gets non-sinusoidal voltage, it is other linear loads also which get non-sinusoidal voltage or distorted voltage and they start giving trouble. These harmonic voltage voltages or distorted voltages give a lot of troubles. I will come to that later on. In addition to this distortion in the voltage, your uh, AC to DC converters, let me take a single phase fully controlled converter. Phase controlled converter. This is source voltage. This is source current IS. And you may have some load here. Maybe R load, RL load, any type of load. RLE load. This is load voltage VD plus minus and this is load current ID. Now what is the input power factor? You have studied basic power electronics from your uh, undergraduate BTEC course. The Power factor definition is cos phi, but power factor on the AC side of a converter, it's not cos phi, it's definition changes. I hope you know it, you have been taught this. Excuse me, I'm going to change my pen. Please bear with me. So, uh, input power factor, IPF, sorry, 
power factor on the AC. This converter has two sides, AC side and DC side. What is the power factor on the AC side? That's called input power factor. You know, input power factor is IS1 by IS into cos phi1, where phi1 is the phase difference between fundamental component of current and voltage. IS1 is the fundamental component of RMS value of fundamental component of current and IS is the RMS value of actual current. For example, your actual current may be like this, maybe square wave. So it has a fundamental component like this. So this is IS1 and this is IS. RMS value of this fundamental component is IS1 and RMS value of actual current is IS. So therefore input power factor is IS1 by IS into cos phi1 where phi1 is this angle. Phi1 is phase angle between this may be voltage, voltage and fundamental component of current. Even if this phi1 is 0, cos phi1 is 1, input power factor say for phi1 equal to 0 degree. Display, this is also called displacement factor. Displacement factor is cos phi1. So displacement factor is equal to cos phi1, that is cos 0 is 1. So, but input power factor will not be 1. Input power, power factor will be still IS1 by IS. It is because IS1 is sinusoidal and IS is distorted. So this is called distortion factor. The more distortion in the current, the lower is the power factor because the harmonics which are there because of the distorted currents, those harmonics also contribute to the reactive power. It is not only the actual reactive power which is flowing in the system due to load. It is harmonics because harmonics are not the useful components of the currents. Harmonics like reactive power add to heating losses in the system only. They are not useful power. So therefore even if uh, displacement factor is unity input power factor will not be unity and input power factor may be much much less than unity it depends upon how much distorted your current is okay so therefore uh, if you see for this phase controlled converter this input power factor is given by is1 by is cos alpha where alpha you know alpha is firing angle or it's called delay angle delay or firing angle you can call it delay angle or firing angle Jitna up alpha thyristors ka bada hoge, converter ka bada hoge. As alpha increases, what happens to cos alpha? Cos alpha decreases. And what happens to input power factor? Input power factor also becomes very poor. So therefore, if you operate this front-end converter, AC to DC converter at high values of firing angle or large values of delay angle, the input power cos phi will be very low and input power factor will be very low. That means it will result in poor input power factor. So therefore another problem which is caused by AC to DC converters especially at large delay angles is that they not only distort the currents but they are responsible for drawing reactive power from the system because if power factor is not unity if it is less than unity it is poor what does it mean what do you mean by poor power factor poor power factor means that your load is drawing reactive power although your load is a DC load it does not require reactive power but your converter is requiring reactive power it acts as a sink or as a load for reactive power so therefore in phase controlled converters as alpha increases input power factor becomes poorer and poorer that means reactive power drawn by the converter increases reactive power q drawn by the converter increases your converter acts as an inductive load and it draws more and more reactive power from the source this is another type of problem the, which these front-end converters cause. You may not have been told by our electronics teacher in your undergraduate BTEC course because in BTEC course we generally show the brighter side of these converters. We show the waveforms that this is the input voltage and this is the output voltage and so on. I mean we show the conversion and control of output voltage, delay angle control we show and we give a very good picture of these converters to the students. The students are really excited. They find that uh, even they, when they go to laboratory and they perform the experiment, they change the delay angle and they see on the oscilloscope that by changing the delay angle, the voltage, output voltage across the load changes. They say that this is, this is the end of it, that the AC to DC converters are ultimate. They convert AC into control DC. I mean, they get excited after seeing through simulations or in the lab, that delay angle control causes voltage output voltage control vd control 
they are really excited. I was also excited. I also get excited when I find, when I draw the waveforms and when I operate the equipment in the laboratory, I do the voltage control, output DC voltage control by firing angle control. That is the brighter side. What is the dark side? In this course, I am giving you the dark side of the converters, these front end AC to DC converters or traditional AC to DC converters. The darker side is that they cause power quality problems. They act as non-linear loads on the system. They draw distorted currents and hence they cause distortion in the voltage at the point of common coupling. And second power quality problem which they introduce is reactive power. They draw, also draw reactive power from the system. Okay, so that is about harmonics and how nonlinear loads result in injection of harmonics in the currents and how they result in distortion in the voltage at the point of common coupling. The second type of, uh, you know, uh, the second factor which is responsible for um, distortion of voltage or voltage distortion that is interharmonics and subharmonics interharmonics and subharmonics see harmonics are defined as sinusoidal components or sinusoidal waves whose frequency is integer multiple of fundamental frequency like third harmonic has a frequency of three times fundamental fifth harmonic has a frequency of five times fundamental seventh harmonic has a frequency of seven times fundamental and so on integer multiple of fundamental but in addition to harmonics in certain situations, uh, there are interharmonics also in the system, in the currents. And interharmonics are uh, the those harmonics, those waves whose frequency is not integer multiple of fundamental frequency. It's not a multiple. It's not three times fundamental. It's not five times fundamental. It's not seven times. It may be 2.5 times fundamental. It may be 5.7, 5.5 times fundamental and so on. So therefore, integer sorry interharmonics or voltage distortions there are distortions in the voltage with uh, the with uh, the frequency of these interharmonics uh, which is not a multiple of fundamental frequency okay now the question is what causes interharmonics what is the cause of interharmonics what causes interharmonics in the system there are mainly few causes like use of cycloconverters. When you use cycloconverters, you must have studied cycloconverters in your power electronics course. Cycloconverters are AC to AC converters. Electric arc furnaces. Electric arc furnaces. And adjustable speed drives with inadequate DC link filtering with inadequate DC link filtering. So these three are the main causes of interharmonics in your currents and voltages. Cycloconverters, they cause interharmonics in the system. Electric arc furnaces. Now let me tell you as far as these electric arc furnaces are concerned. Electric arc furnaces themselves, they do not inject interharmonic currents or voltages into the system. They actually draw the currents which are integer multiples of fundamental. Integer, I am talking about arc furnaces. What type of currents they draw? They draw the currents which are integer multiples of fundamental frequency. Plus, they draw, they also draw currents which are currents and voltages which are continuous I, I will write here continuous current currents and voltages continuous current and voltage spectrum of parasitic frequencies parasitic frequencies this is very important you have to understand the uh, electric arc furnaces draw you know, they draw harmonics, integer which are integer multiples of fundamental, plus they draw spectrum, spectra of currents and voltages, which are at parasitic frequencies. Parasitic frequency means any frequency. It may be 1000 Hertz, it may be 1500 Hertz, 
it's a spectrum of many many frequencies and what happens some of these parasitic frequencies they cause resonance in the system and those particular frequencies they get amplified so some frequencies get amplified and those frequencies are not integer multiples of fundamental they are non integer multiples of fundamental so they some frequencies get amplified because of resonance and it is these frequencies which are not integer multiples of fundamental they are nothing but interharmonics this is how electric arc furnaces result in uh, you know uh, interharmonics in the system and how do adjustable speed drives with um, inadequate dc link filtering result in interharmonics in adequate dc link filtering actually if you have an inverter uh, because adjustable speed drive as you have seen it is a front end converter then dc link then pwm voltage source inverter and then three phase induction motor if the dc link filter after the front end converter is inadequate then inverter does not produce pure sine waves it produces sine waves with some non fundamental frequency components or interharmonic voltages and what happens those interharmonic voltages they make their way into the ac system they go they get injected into the grid and hence they cause interharmonics in the system now in addition to interharmonics there are subharmonics what are subharmonics subharmonics are harmonics whose frequency is less than fundamental frequencies less than fundamental i mean if your fundamental frequency is 50 hertz they are the harmonics or they are the distortions whose frequency is less than 50 hertz for example you may have a subharmonic at a frequency of 10 hertz a subharmonic at a frequency of 5 hertz 2 hertz 2 hertz is very close to dc or 30 hertz and so on these frequency components which are less than fundamental frequency they are called subharmonics and the cause of subharmonics is uh, oscillations in the earth magnetic field following a solar flare whenever there is solar flare the earth magnetic field oscillates and because of oscillation in the earth magnetic field it results in induced voltages and currents whose frequencies are less than fundamental frequency and those voltages and currents flow in the machines transformers and those are called subharmonics now these subharmonics are very very dangerous for the system as far as interharmonics are concerned they are not a main cause of concern however at certain frequencies they may result in resonance with resonance between uh, reactance of the system and capacitance of the system at certain frequencies otherwise they are not a cause of concern but subharmonics are a cause of concern because subharmonics are some of the subharmonics are very close to dc like 2 hertz what is the frequency of dc dc ki frequency 0 hertz hai 2 hertz is very close to dc and if these subharmonic currents are flowing in your transformer and induction machines and synchronous machines they cause tremendous heating in the machine and they cause they also cause heating additional heating and saturation of your core so subharmonics have to be taken care of they cause tremendous heating or large heating in machines and they may result in damage to the machines and turbines so that was about interharmonics and subharmonics their causes and how they are detrimental to the system third type of cause of voltage distortion is voltage notching voltage notching if you have studied three phase ac to dc converters and you have also studied commutation overlap in a three phase ac to dc converter whenever there is commutation that is current uh, you fire a particular pair of device and current gets transferred from outgoing pair of device to incoming pair of device and at that time all the devices incoming as well as outgoing outgoing devices they are on and this is called commutation overlap okay and this commutation overlap is because of leakage reactance of the transformer leakage system inductance or leakage inductance or leakage reactance it is the inductance which causes delay in the transfer of current from outgoing pair of thyristors to incoming pair of thyristors with the result that during this commutation overlap period all the thyristors remain on outgoing thyristors as well as incoming thyristors remain on 
and it causes a dip in the phase voltage or output DC voltage of the converter. And what happens to the line voltage? If you see the line voltages, the line voltages get distorted like this. You find some notches in the line voltages like this. Similarly, you find some notches like this in the line voltages. And these notches, obviously, you can see they make your line voltage, uh, you know, distorted. They distort the line voltage. This is the commutation overlap period. This period is overlap period. It happens during this overlap period that your line voltages get notches. And sometimes the notch may be very deep. For example, the notch may be very deep. It may be as deep as this much. I mean, your voltage may, notch may be so deep that for this computation overlap period, voltage becomes zero. Now, these notches are also responsible for distortion of the voltage. And these notches cause other, other problems, operational problems. One example I am going to give you is uh, in a concert. It was found that in a concert, musical concert, their stage in a musical concert, stage lights were used because in a concert we have stage lights which are disco lights which turn on and off in a particular uh, manner. They are operated by a timer circuit and according to that timer circuit, different lights turn on and on off in a you know different manner in a particular predefined fashion and. They also have microphones. They are also fed from the AC supply microphones. In a concert somewhere in India, it was found that in, that in a particular building where this concert, musical concert was held, there was a large lift also in that building. And that lift was operated by AC to DC converter. Okay, Maybe it was using a DC motor. That's why AC to DC converter was used. And this AC to three phase AC to DC converter was used because lift was large. This three phase AC to DC converter caused voltage notching like this. When, when this lift was turned on, it caused notch like this. See the st stage lights uh, were operated by a dimmer circuit. Dimmer circuit. And this dimmer circuit is based on a timer circuit. And timer circuit, the timer circuit of this dimmer circuit the timer was you know operating on zero crossing detection i mean whenever it was uh, the zero crossing was there it was making some count and accordingly it was controlling the uh, turning on and off of stage lights but because of turning on of this lift the voltage got distorted there was a voltage notch the notch was very deep as deep as this so this is actual zero crossing zero pi is actual zero crossing 2 pi is also actual zero crossing. This is also zero crossing because during this period, because of notching, the voltage becomes zero, but this is false zero crossing. False. But timer does not know whether the zero crossing is actual or false. Whenever false, you know, read this zero crossing here, it started, uh, you know, counting again. It started counting here, it started counting here. It was not supposed to start counting here. Okay, so its operation got disturbed and all stage lights were disturbed in the concert. It was observed. So that is the effect of voltage notching and I have given you a practical example how it had affect the stage lights in a concert. Now the fourth cause is DC offset in loads. In loads. DC offset means the Current may be either positive, it may have positive DC offset or negative DC offset. An example is a single phase half wave rectifier. Let, let me show you a single phase half wave rectifier feeding a purely resistive load. This is diode. This is load voltage V0 or VD, load current I, source voltage Vs. You already know the operation of this 0 pi 2 pi. This, this, is, this is 3 pi. This is your source voltage Vs. During the positive half cycle of source voltage from 0 to pi, the diode is forward biased and it conducts and it conducts the load current I. During the negative half cycle of source voltage, diode is reverse biased, it does not conduct any current. So current remains 0 during negative half cycle and then it again flows during positive half cycle. So this is the nature of current. 
and if your rectifier is fed by a, through a transformer for example your rectifier is fed through a transformer a step down transformer maybe what type of current this transformer is carrying it is not carrying ac current ac current would have been this whose average value is zero where we have positive excursion as well as negative excursion but it has only positive current no negative current so this is a dc current and when this dc current flows through the transformer primary as well as secondary it causes deep saturation of the core and when the core of magnetic core of transformer gets saturated it gives rise to lo large losses in the transformer so therefore current has an offset and this is called dc offset in the loads and offset in current causes offset in voltage also i will give you an example let us take a system like this See, I have three buses, a distribution system I am showing. This is bus one, this is bus number two, and this is bus number three. This is generator bus. This is generator bus. Or, uh, because it is uh, or connected to the generator or it may be connected to the distribution transformer, it is generator bus. You have a load here, load connected to bus number two. You have a load. You have a load let us call this load one you have another load load two to bus three and you have another load load three to bus connected to bus three bus two supplies only one load bus three supplies two loads load two and load let us suppose this load two is half wave rectifier so therefore what type of current it draws it draws this type of current dc current so it is something like this it was this type of current. I will show you along with magnitude, zero, you know, uh, this is 50 amperes, this is 100 amperes. It draws this type of current, zero to pi, and then two pi to three pi. This is the nature of current drawn by a half wave rectifier. It draws half wave, you know, positive current during negative half cycles, there is no current. What is the current in feeder one? Or what is the voltage uh, of this bus? Let me show you the voltage of this bus, bus 3. First of all, I will show you bus, uh, feed, this is, let us call this feeder 1 and this is called feeder 2. Let me call this IF2, feeder 2 current and this is IF1, feeder 1 current. What is the nature of current in the feeder? If this half wave rectifier would not have been there, the current would have been symmetrical like this. But since half wave rectifier is there, there may, this may be a linear load, but this is a non-linear load. It draws this type of current. The feeder 2 current, IF2, will be like this. This is 50. This is 100. It may go as high as 100 during positive half cycle. And during negative half cycle, it will go only up to 50 amperes. So there is DC offset in the current. Why current magnitude goes up to 100 in positive half cycle? Because it is because of the fact that load 3 draws current, load 2 also draws current, but load 2 draws current only during the positive half cycles. So the current, us current ko, ye current, is current ko add ho jayegi and it will become 100 ampere. But in the negative half cycle, this does not draw any current because it's a half wave rectifier. This draws current. Negative half cycle mein khali 50 amperes. So therefore there is offset in the current. So this is the nature of current which flows in the feeder 2 and because of this feeder 2 ki voltage, bus 3 ki voltage distort ho jati hai. Usme bhi offset a jata hai. V bus 3, bus 3 ki voltage. Let us suppose this is 5 volts, 10 volts, minus 5 volts, minus 10 volts. Dekhe bus ki voltage. Now since the, when this voltage, when this large during the positive half cycle of the current, large around 100 ampere of, 100 ampere peak current flows. So usse yaan system mein, feeder mein reactance hai, usme drop zyada a jata hai. So voltage 5 or 10 ke beech mein a jati hai. And during negative half cycle, how much, what's the amplitude of current? It's only 50 ampere. So yaan drop kam ho jata hai. So ye almost 10 ampere, 10 volts ke aas paas. So you can see positive half cycles may voltage come milti hai at the bus 
नेगेटिव ऑफ साइकिल्स में फुल वोल्टेज मिलती है सो देर इज अ नेगेटिव शिफ्ट इन द वोल्टेज देर इज अ पॉजिटिव शिफ्ट इन द करंट फीडर करंट एंड देर इज अ नेगेटिव शिफ्ट इन द बस वोल्टेज एंड वेन दिस टाइप ऑफ वोल्टेज इज अवेलेबल एट द बस इट इज फेड टू द लीनियर लोड ऑल्सो हेयर दिस लोड मे बी एन इंडक्शन मोटर सो देर फॉर इंडक्शन मोटर इज गेटिंग वट टाइप ऑफ वोल्टेज इट इज गेटिंग अ वोल्टेज विच हेज अ नेगेटिव शिफ्ट बिकॉज पॉजिटिव करंट इज बिटवीन फाइव एंड टेन एंड नेगेटिव करंट इज माइनस टेन so it has a uh, negative peak is minus 10 positive peak may be only 7 so it has a negative shift plus 7 volt minus 10 volt so it has a negative shift so therefore your induction motor if it is a motor it it will it will also draw currents which will have shift and it will result and if the mode if the load is uh, you know uh, supplied through a transformer there will be saturation of the transformer core deep saturation and there will be additional losses in the motor there will be additional losses in the transformer this is what dc offset in loads does to your system i have shown simple example of a distribution system okay so these are four causes of voltage distortion i repeat when we started our lecture i told you that there are uh, there, there are distortions in the voltage distortion is the degree to which voltage gets uh deviated from its sinusoidal waveform and i told you that there are mainly four causes of voltage distortion number one harmonics number two interharmonics number three voltage notching and number four dc offset in the loads and we have discussed all the four cases now you have to understand what is the effect of these uh, <clears throat> on the load now there is a voltage distortion no doubt about that what is its distortion what is its effect on the load let us try to study effect of voltage harmonics or voltage distortion effect of voltage distortion on consumer loads not only consumer loads and utility also utility also suffers because of distortions in the voltage one example i will give you i will give a practical exam which was observed in iit kanpur in late 1990s one phenomenon was observed there in iit kanpur a feeder of 33 kv 33 kilo volts feeder comes from the receiving substation it comes to the campus of iit kanpur and then in iit kanpur they have a transformer step down transformer which is rated at 5 mva it supplies the whole campus so it is rated at 5 mva and it steps down this voltage from 33 kv to 11 kv and then this 11 kv feeder goes to you know various there are five substations five substations in iit kanpur campus so for example this may be substation 1 this substation 1 will have its own step down transformer it feeds let me call this substation 1 substation 2 substation 3 substation 4 and substation 5 five substations this may be hostel area this may be staff quarter area this may be some department area this may be administrative blocks area and so on so i repeat a 33 kv feeder comes on the campus of uh, iit kanpur which is supplied through receiving substation then they have their own substation where 5 mva transformer is installed step down transformer which steps down the voltage from 33 kv to 11 kv then this 11 kv feeder is distributed to five substations and each substation feeds a certain type of load maybe student residential area staff residential area departments administration and so on and so forth it was observed that at one of the substations let us suppose substation 3 the substation 3 was feeding a computer center cc means computer center in addition it was also feeding a computerized telephone exchange same substation computerized telephone exchange because you know all campuses they have their telephone exchanges this substation 3 has a bus and this bus was feeding computer center 
you know computer center of IIT Kanpur is very big very large and also telephone exchange which was computerized telephone exchange now this computer center you know uh, all computer centers they have their UPSs even in our institute NIT Srinagar we also have a computer center computer services center we call it computer services center it has its own UPS so that whenever there is power failure the uh, you know computer services center keeps on running um, and uh, power is supplied by the UPS it gets uninterrupted power supply in IIT Kanpur uh, the computer center has large UPS very large UPS and if you know if you remember UPS also uses a front-end converter AC to DC converter because what is in a UPS you have single phase AC is coming then that AC is converted into DC and then that charges the battery bank and then that DC is converted back into AC with the help of PW voltage source inverter and then load is fed by the inverter. So for charging of the battery and for creating the DC link for the inverter, you have a front end converter. It was found that this front end converter, which is AC to DC converter, which is a non-linear load, it, it was drawing highly distorted currents from the source. And because of drawing highly distorted currents, the voltage got distorted. It became the voltage at point of common coupling. It became distorted like this. It was changed from sinusoidal to triangular wave with a peak value of 600 volts. What was voltage available here? Voltage available here was, you know, uh, voltage available here was sinusoidal voltage. And sinusoidal voltage, you know, 230 volts single phase ka peak kita hota hai, peak, V peak. Peak voltage is 230 into root 2, that is 325 volts. This peak, 325 volts. Hai. Lekin, front end converter jo UPS mein laga tha, jo computer center mein tha, it distorted voltage. Isne itni zyada distortion currents mein, uh, it, draw, it drew large largely dis distorted currents jisse aapki voltage jo hai wo, i have already told you that distortions in the current cause distortion in the voltage at point of common coupling aapki voltage sine wave se triangular wave bani and not only this 325 peak se iska peak 600 volts ho gaya to yahi voltage ya aapka point of common coupling ab hai ab aapka computer service center jahan pe ye ups laga hai wo is sine voltage sine wave voltage ko uh, triangular way may change kar raha hai or peak value ko increase kar raha hai from 325 volts to 600 volts so therefore what is voltage at point of common coupling it is not sine wave it is a triangular wave yehi triangular wave jab computer computerized telephone exchange ko supply hui computerized telephone exchange ke sari power supplies jal gai all the power supplies of telephone exchange got burnt because of distorted voltage and high peak of voltage the peak was increased from 325 volts to 600 volts. And it was a big loss for them. They had to change all power supplies of telephone exchange. And this has practically happened in IIT Kanpur in late 1990s. So therefore, voltage distortions should not be taken lightly. They cause problems in the system. So let me uh, show you the... Uh, uh, a practical distribution system again this is your generator bus let me call this bus one this is feeder one feeder one this is bus two this is feeder two it's a radial distribution system and this is bus three i will take same example jo mere, uh, dc offset mein liya tha. you have a load here let me call this load as load two. Load one. You have two loads on bus three. On bus one, bus two, you have only one load. Load one. Here you have two loads. Load two and load three. Let us suppose this is a non-linear load. NLL means non-linear load. Again, using power electronic AC to DC converter front-end converter which makes it a non-linear load and let us suppose all other loads load 1 and load 3 they are linear loads okay let us suppose this load draws this type of current 
let us call this IL2, load current 2, IL2. And it is not sinusoidal, it is distorted like this. It distorts the current. It draws distorted current like this. Okay. So this is the current drawn by load 2. It's a non-linear load. Now, when this current flows through the feeder, feeders will have their own reactances and this transformer leakage reactance is also there. It causes voltage drop in the feeder reactance and transformer leakage reactance. And you know, those voltage drops will be non-sinusoidal voltage drops. And therefore, voltage which is available here at bus 3 as well as at bus 2, that will be source voltage minus those drops and since those drops source voltage bus 1 voltage is purely sinusoidal but the drops are non-sinusoidal so they are, therefore if this is the point of common coupling this is the point of common coupling the voltage at bus 2 will get distorted voltage at bus 3 will also get distorted let me show you bus 2 voltage there will be more distortion to that bus just bus pe ye non linear load connected hai ye non linear load bus 3 pe connected hai to yahan pe ye aapka point of common coupling hai ki kyunki yahan pe dusre load bhi connected hai yahan pe zyada distortion ho jayegi and your voltage becomes bus voltage i will write here bus 3 voltage it becomes highly distorted like this ये बस टू वोल्टेज है इट नो लॉन्गर इज साइनोसाइडल बिकॉज करंट इज नॉन साइनोसाइडल वोल्टेज एट पॉइंट ऑफ कॉमन कपलिंग बस थ्री पे भी नॉन साइनोसाइडल वोल्टेज है एंड व्हाट इज वोल्टेज एट बस टू बस टू पे भी नॉन साइनोसाइडल वोल्टेज है लेकिन उसमें सिवेरिटी कम होगी बिकॉज दैट इज फॉर अवे फ्रॉम दिस इस बस पे जो वोल्टेज है दैट इज दिस डिस्टॉर्टेड करंट माइनस दिस ड्रॉप चूंकि ये रिएक्टेंस यहाँ कम हो जाती है ये रिएक्टेंस सब हो जाती है तो यहाँ पे ड्रॉप यहाँ पे आई मीन डिस्टॉर्शन कम होती है तो यहाँ पे इस टाइप की डिस्टॉर्शन है बस टू पे आई विल राइट हेयर बस टू वोल्टेज बस टू पे इस टाइप की वोल्टेज अवेलेबल होगी इसमें भी डिस्टॉर्शन इट इज ऑल्सो डिस्टॉर्टेड बट यू कैन सी दिस इज मोर डिस्टॉर्टेड दैन दिस सो दिस एग्जाम्पल ऑल्सो शोज दैट वेन एवर यू हैव अ नॉन लीनियर लोड कनेक्टेड एट एनी बस it results in distortion in bus voltages or voltages at the point of common coupling now let us try to summarize our lecture by uh, writing the um, effects of harmonic distortion or voltage distortions effects of voltage distortions and nonlinear loads Of course, these voltage distortions are, are due to the non-linear loads. So first is poor input power factor. Poor input power factor. Because I have already told you that input power factor of a non-linear load, a, a, a traditional AC to DC converter load is IS1 by IS into cos phi1. So even if phi one cos phi one is unity, but distortion in current is there, and um, in case of AC to DC converter, phase controlled converter, it is cos alpha. At large values of delay angle, power factor becomes poorer and poorer. So at large values of delay angle, input power factor IPF becomes poor. So therefore, your system draws more reactive power. Okay. So resulting, I will write here. Resulting in more reactive power and less active power available. So, if um, KVA or MVA rating system ki say X MVA hai, and if it if there is more flow of reactive power, the active power will automatically go down. So, therefore, the line or the system will remain underutilized. Second is that this reactive power flow will cause I square R losses okay I square R losses in the system because reactive when reactive power is flowing in addition to active component of current there will be reactive component of current also flowing so overall magnitude of the current will increase so 
losses in the transmission system, losses in the generator, losses in the transformers will increase. Okay, so this will result in lower transmission efficiency, lower transmission efficiency. The transmission line efficiency will go down because there are more losses due to additional reactive power. So, if you have transmission losses, same rakhni hai, efficiency increase karni hai. So, for increased efficiency, what you have to do? You have to increase the MVA rating of the system. For increased efficiency, VA rating of generators, transformers, and transmission lines has to be increased. So, you have to change the whole system. If your generator was 100 MVA, maybe you have to go for 120 MVA to make uh, to maintain the efficiency of the system. If transmission lines are there, you have to replace your transmission lines by more uh, thick transmission lines to reduce the losses and keep the efficiency safe. If you have X MVA transformers, you have to replace them by X Y MVA transformers where Y is greater than X. So all the system components have to be overrated. I mean, you have to increase the VA rating of generators transformers and transmission lines. Is that viable? No, that's not possible. The government will not allow you to change the entire system because it will be a very costly affair. Okay. So next problem is <coughs> voltage drop at buses. Because of uh, more reactive power flow in the system, there will be more I into X drop and I into R drop in the system. Because uh, the current will increase, current will not only be carrying active component of component, it will be carrying reactive component also. Because your converter is operating at large delay angle, so power factor, input power factor will be poor and there will be more reactive power drawn by your converter. And more reactive power means current magnitude will increase and that will increase these voltage drops. So therefore voltages which are available at the buses will reduce. So there will be voltage drop at buses. So therefore voltage regulation of system will suffer. So this is another problem due to nonlinear loads. Next is mal operation of sensitive equipment mal operation of sensitive equipment like programmable logic controller malfunction there are many equipments in the industries which use programmable logic controller for control purposes and if uh, a distorted voltage is fed to plc plc based systems will malfunction so therefore all sensitive equipments especially those which are using plc programmable logic controllers they will malfunction next is <clears throat> computer shutdown it has been found that due to distortion high distortions in the voltages the computers shut down computer shutdown that's why you feed your computers through ups ups gives sinusoidal voltage to the computers otherwise if you give non sinusoidal or distorted voltage to the computers many computers shut down then there are metering errors metering errors energy meters they give wrong reading because the voltage which is available at the energy meter terminals it's not sinusoidal it is non sinusoidal so there will be metering errors also then there will be tripping of adjustable speed drives adjustable speed drives will also malfunction and some of them may trip even trip next is insulation failure insulation failure due to overheating over heating 
and over voltages okay because of harmonics there are uh, the voltages uh, will increase uh, and uh, you know cable voltage voltages uh, through voltages across the cables due to harmonics will increase and there will be over voltages and due to increase in the voltage there will be insulation failure okay next is <clears throat> damaging dielectric heating in cables damaging dielectric heating in cables in underground cables there will be more dielectric losses due to harmonics and more dielectric heating the dielectric heating may be so large that the cables may get damaged next is racing or blinking of digital clocks blinking of digital clocks all the digital clocks require a purely sinusoidal voltage but when they are fed with distorted voltage it results in racing or blinking of digital clocks next is saturation in transformers saturation in transformers because you know because of these harmonics there will be additional harmonic eddy current losses hysteresis losses and uh, i have told you that if there is offset in the loads the, that will result in offset in the voltages at the point of common coupling and those offset uh, in the voltages at the point of common couplings will result in saturation in transformers okay this is kl next is capacitor bank failures capacitor bank failures you know uh, for power factor improvement you have capacitor banks connected at the substations like this now all capacitor banks are uh, you know fitted with their fuses now the what is the voltage across these capacitor banks it's no longer sinusoidal it is non sinusoidal at certain harmonic frequencies what happens the capacitance of the capacitor banks uh, resonates with the system reactance the transformer will have some reactance i'm showing transformer leakage reactance transformer leakage inductance and capacitance of the capacitor banks they fall in resonance series resonance at certain harmonic frequencies because the voltage applied across the capacitor banks is distorted it comprises of fundamental and various harmonic frequencies and at certain harmonic frequencies there is a resonance between capacitor bank capacitances and system reactances and because of that large currents because of series resonance large currents flow through the capacitor banks and their fuses blow so that results in failure of capacitor banks problems with electronic controls there is problems with electronic controls especially with those controls which are based on zero crossing detection i have told you voltage notching gives false zero crossings and when there are false zero crossings all your electronic controls which are based on detection of zero crossings they will mal operate so there will be problems in electronic control then there is electromagnetic interference electromagnetic interference with nearby communication equipments with nearby communication and control equipments if your power line is running parallel to a communication line because of harmonics in the power line there is electromagnetic interference with the telephone lines or communication lines and other control equipments okay next is <coughs> deteriorated performance deteriorated induction motor performance induction motor performance gets deteriorated in terms of in what terms in terms of torque pulsations
and over efficiency. I already told you when a distorted voltage is applied across an induction motor, the induction motor in addition to fundamental component, it draws the harmonic component of currents also and those harmonic component of currents result in I square or additional I square or losses and also increased eddy current and hysteresis losses and there is more heating and less efficiency of the motor and then because of the harmonics there are har torque pulsations there are some harmonic torques which act in the clockwise direction and some harmonic torques which act in anti-clockwise direction and the combined effect is that there are pulsations in the torque and that puts you know a lot of shock a lot of vibration that gives rise to vibrations of the induction motor shaft and it reduces the useful life of the induction motor and the induction motor itself may fail okay and then there are uh, apart from poor efficiency cogging of induction motor cogging phenomenon you know uh, i hope you know what is cogging cogging is refusal of an induction motor to start and in your machines course, you must have been taught by your teacher that to avoid cogging, cogging skewing of slots is done. But in uh, in presence of harmonics, even if the slots are skewed, the cogging phenomenon may appear again. I mean, induction motor may refuse to start because of harmonic distortions. Okay. Next is malfunction of protective rel relays. Malfunction of protective relays. The protective relays uh, will malfunction and maybe there is false stripping. There is false stripping of circuit breakers. I mean there is no fault but circuit breakers get signal from protective relays and they get tripped. That's called false triggering. This is another problem because of this. Next is neutral overheating. Or neutral burning you know uh, when harmonic currents are flowing in a three-phase four-wire system now in a three-phase four-wire system it's a if it's a balanced system and driving linear loads there are no harmonics uh, we know that neutral current is IA plus IB plus IC it is zero neutral current is zero but even if your load is balanced but you have non-linear loads single phase non-linear loads connected to the system these non-linear loads draw third harmonic components of current and multiples of third harmonic component of currents and these third harmonic component of current in all the three lines they add up and then they flow in the neutral wire of the system and they cause neutral overheating and neutral burning we will study it in one of the classes that how nonlinear loads cause neutral overheating and neutral burning and then finally lower rectifier efficiency you know when a nonlinear current or distorted current flows through a rectifier if a sinusoidal current flows through it it has certain rms value now if this sinusoidal current is converted into this non sinusoidal waveform like this the rms value of non sinusoidal current is higher than the rms value of sine current so because of higher rms value of distorted current the efficiency of the rectifier also uh, decreases and therefore um, it can be a big problem in uh, industrial plant i mean these harmonics where there is large concentration of distorting loads as well as sensitive loads in industrial environment i would like to say that uh, these harmonics or voltage distortion results in loss of time production sales deliveries and revenue there is a huge loss of revenue so this is about this was about voltage distortion causes of voltage distortion i told you that main causes of voltage distortion are harmonics interharmonics voltage notching and dc offset in the loads and then uh, i gave you certain practical examples and i tried to explain to you that how distortion nonlinear loads uh, draw distorted currents and distortion in the currents causes distortion in the voltage at point of common coupling giving rise to dis voltage distortions at the point of common coupling and then with the help of a simple radial feeder system I have with the help of waveforms tried to explain that how distorted currents uh, give rise to distortion in the voltages and once these distorted voltages are there 
how they are detrimental to the system. So, so some uh, 18 drawbacks of voltage distortions we have studied. Okay, so uh, that, that was about voltage distortion, causes and bad effects of voltage distortion in your electrical power system. So I will end my today's lecture here. Inshallah in our next lecture we will study other type of power, second category of power quality problems that's events. So in first type of power called first category of power quality problems that's voltage and current variations. We have studied various classes of these power quality problems, various types of power quality problems which come under this category like voltage magnitude variation, <clears throat> voltage frequency variation, uh, voltage fluctuations, voltage flicker, current magnitude variation, current phase variation, uh, three phase unbalance or current and voltage unbalance and today we covered the one of the most important power quality problems that is voltage distortion causes and effects. So I will end my today's lecture. I advise all of you to go through this lecture and in case of any queries, please feel free to ask me the queries. I am I will be always there to clear your doubts and answer your queries. All the best to all of you. Thank you.